going to begin by standing and we'll begin by singing our opening hymn.
Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, the bread of life, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You fill us with your forgiveness. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost is from Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him. What are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. 
And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking, G seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, you're seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. 
So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the man in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand. clock's running out. School's going to be starting here pretty soon. But we have the fair this week. We have the fair this week. And, and, uh, and it's supposed to, there's a, um, an absolute miracle. It's supposed to not rain for this coming week. That's a modern day miracle because every time there's the fair, it rains. And uh, we're supposed to have sunshine every day this week. We're supposed to. <coughs> Well, I've got, I've got a little uh, test for you. You like tests? No, not, not really, not. It's not a school test, but um, it should be easy. I think even you can do it, Emily. And uh, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a, a name of a body part, and you tell me how many, right? Like, like uh, nose, how many? One. Feet? Two. Head? One. One. Arm, two. fingers, ten. 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 Uh, Jesus, one. Uh, baptism. One. Yeah, well, those aren't body parts, but there is only one Jesus. There's there's one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're, you're thinking ahead, and uh, um, but there's one Jesus, one baptism, and and uh, and 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 that's what it's talking about today. Um, Paul in the epistle lesson. He uses the word one seven times in two verses. Let me read those again. And you count them. Count them with your fingers each time I say one. So there, there's one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. That's a lot of times to say one, isn't it? And, and uh, St. Paul's talking about um, how, and, and he also talks about how, how we're one. And, and you know, there, there's, there's, there's um, how, many, how many kids are, you know how many kids are in my family? 23. There's 20, I had 11 brothers and 11 sisters. You read the book. And, and uh, how many... How many of you can beat that? I didn't think so. With dogs. No, dogs don't count for brothers and sisters. Uh, they're, they're good friends and stuff, but not... Yeah. How many dogs? 
between 30 and 28? You don't even know how many dogs you have? <laughs> my goodness. And uh, my mom didn't say, well, I've got 20 plus kids somewhere in the 20s. Anyway, I'm picking up Emily. And, and, uh, but but there's, there's 23 of us kids, and then plus mom and dad, that's 25. But how many, how many were in my family? I mean, how many families did I have? One. All of us were part of one family, the Carlson family. Yeah. And, and you guys, you each have how, how many kids in each of your families? Seven. Seven, seven, seven four. And, and di different numbers. Yeah, different numbers. But they're, they're one, it's one family, right? You're part of one family. All of you are the one family. And, and same with us. There's, there's a lot of people in here, right? And, and how, many, how many church families is this? One. One church family made up of lots of little families within that church family. And, and, uh, and, and what makes us one isn't because we look alike. Look out there. Not everybody looks alike, do they? And, and you've got men and women. You've got old and young. You've got gray hairs and brown hair and black hair. And, I mean, everybody's different, right? And what makes us one? We, we have, um, we just had, the, right before the children's message, we had our confession of faith. And, and God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that's what makes us one. We have a common confession. We were all baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We have one baptism, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's what makes us one, right? Because we've got all kinds of differences out here. Different opinions, different different ages, different people, different families, but we're all one because of our the same confession. We believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We've been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And and that's what makes us one. Just like just like you guys, what makes you part of your family is being born into that family, right? Being born into that family. And and uh, you grow up in that family. And we're we're born again into this family through water and the word and holy baptism. We'll pray. You want to pray with me? We'll pray. Thank you, Jesus, for making me part of your family, the church, through baptism and faith in you. Amen.
grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We hear again from the epistle lesson just read, where St. Paul says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who's over all and through all and in all. As we've been going through... Paul's sermon, uh, epistle to the church in Ephesus, in Zion, Lutheran Church in Fairbanks, Alaska. Hearing this great old preacher and apostle talk to our congregations. You know, and we, he's talking today about unity. And we all want it. We want more unity. We want unity at home, at church, at work, in Juneau, in Washington, D.C. The problem is, is we want everybody to agree with us. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. We need someone or something to unite us, to make us one. It's been almost a year since Dana and I accepted the call to come to Zion. And uh, it's been amazing what's happened in this last year. Oh, it's been full of trials and challenges and and uh, um, number one, COVID. The government encouraging people not to gather together. Even putting restrictions on churches that later were found unconstitutional. But to see the congregation grow. Grow together. To grow through this whole experience, these challenges that we face, it's amazing. As a pastor seeing even in July, well now it's August 1st, uh, but, but to see a uh, hundred people in, in church get excited for in the middle of the summer to have that many in, in church, knowing that all the options that you have available at this time Places to go, things to do, blueberries to pick, salmon to put in the freezer. Here, St. Paul urges, he urges us to live a life worthy of the calling we've received. Being completely humble and gentle. What causes discord in any relationship? Be it between individuals or spouses or in the workplace. It's arrogance and pride. The opposite of that is humility and gentleness. That's what builds relationships. That draws people together. Humility and gentleness. Be patient, St. Paul says, bearing with one another in love. We have some wonderful people in this congregation, people on both ends of the spectrum on COVID, people that want to hunker down, people that want to get back to normal, and yet are understanding of each other. That's awesome. That we can understand and, and, and bear.
bear with one another in love. In so many other areas. I, I, I remember as a, as a teenager first coming to Zion and, and then um, going off to, after, after Dan and I got married, I decided to go to Alaska Bible College, study to be a Baptist preacher. I come back to Zion and, and visit. As Pastor Kalth, he says, you know, he says, Andy, I, I disagree with you, but I love you. And you're always welcome at Zion. And, and I, wow, that's different. And that's how all the members were. They could disagree agree with me as, as, a, as a, a young, know-it-all, uh, uh, Baptist preacher in training. Uh, they, could, they could embrace me and yet disagree with me at the same time. I'd never seen that before in other churches. It was unique to Zion. It had a huge impact on me. Bearing with one another in love. Make every effort, St. Paul says, to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You know, we all have different political ideas. We all have different opinions. We all have different views on COVID and everything else. We could find all kinds of differences if we looked for them. What draws us together as a congregation? It's Jesus. And that love that he's first shown us, that when we reflect to others, we able to overlook different opinions and, and, and differences we have with others, looking for common ground. And that's what St. Paul points us to, what, what unites us. And this reminder, you all know this, but this reminder that we need to hear again and again. We have one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's the mystery of the triunity or trinity. This Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. It's one of those great mysteries of the faith. It's confessed in our, the apostles and Nicene creeds. Who is this Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And what have they done for us and our creation, redemption, and sanctification. This one baptism that we have all experienced and, and you know, even with differences with other churches, there, there's one baptism that's recognized. Trinitarian baptism. If you were to join a Catholic church, you wouldn't have to get rebaptized. You'd have to get remarried because your marriage wouldn't be recognized if it was in a Lutheran church. But they would recognize that baptism and vice versa. As it was in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Other churches recognize that. That one baptism that we have that makes us Christians. The washing away of sins. That unites us. and makes us part of something bigger than us. You know, I, I've had a book. It was How to Win Friends and Influence Enemies. Uh, it was Dale Carnegie. And, and you know, uh, you probably read it. It's a famous one. It's been around for years and years. And uh, you, know, you, you look for things that you have in common with others instead of differences you have with others. Finding Things that we have in common. And as, as, as fellow believers, as part of this family of Christ here at Zion Lutheran Church, what do we have in common? Common confession, common faith, common baptism, a common direction we're going, and, and uh, uh, this. this common task we've been given to baptize and make disciples of all nations. And as we do this, it draws us together and, and keeping our eyes on Jesus, 
rather than issues and other things around us, rather than looking for differences in fellow believers, we look for common ground in Christ. We live together in peace and love. It, this glue that holds us together, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we have. That's what we hold on to as we go through the, the challenges of, of family life in a church, as this church family. May God continue to transform and change us so we might be lowly, meek, patient with one another, that we might continue to be eager to maintain the unity and the bond of peace. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth. Grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profane. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, strengthen us by your spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will and into your merciful hands. We commend uh, those in need of your, your healing touch for Joyce Robinson as she undergoes tests and Della Letterman, Linda Gronwald's sister-in-law who's recovering from brain surgery. For Phelan Green, who's recovering from surgery also. Nancy Bernhardt. Karina Ziesmer. Randa Pettijohn. Naomi and Emily. Robert and Lorna Wright. Kelsey. Aaron Carlin. The family. Families and staff at Open Arms. And for others whom we name in our hearts at this time. Lord, you are the great physician of soul and body, and we trust these, your servants, into your hands, asking for healing according to your gracious will. We also lift up to you the, the families, Ken Feeler, Irene Letterman, and Jessica Baker, as they mourn their losses but also at the same time rejoice in the good news of the resurrection, the promise of the resurrection and life everlasting. For all who are in need, we pray for them at all times that your will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us to trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. We verbally share the peace with those near us. We rise. Now may the true body and precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen, preserve you steadfast in the true faith, life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. We pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.
percentage of the purchase price back. There is no fee to you to participate in these programs. It does not increase the cost of the item that you purchase, and it does not affect your Fred Meyer rewards points. Signing up is easy, and both programs are convenient to use. I will be handing out information on how to enroll in these programs as you leave. If you have any questions or need assistance, please Feel free to call me at the church office. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Go in peace, serve God and your neighbor. Thanks be to God.